Welcome back to Pat Bar LSAT Prep. In this video, we begin our presentation of Prep Test 76. The four sections of Prep Test 76 are in this order reading comprehension, logical reasoning, logic games, and back to logical reasoning. The first passage in reading comprehension compares Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg to German composer Ludwig van Beethoven. If you have yet to read and digest this passage, pause this video now and resume when ready. As you've noted, this passage is seven paragraphs long. In fact, each passage in this section comprises more than 50 lines of text. You should already be making short summaries of each paragraph in a passage. The longer the passage, the more important these summaries will be. This will also help you learn to summarize on the fly when taking the actual test. In passage 1, the author makes several assumptions about the reader, chief among them that you come into the piece as someone who likes Beethoven but not Schoenberg, and specifically intends to explain why you should. Meantime, if you're not reading carefully, you may miss some subtle twists. For example, a quote about one man's music is used to summarize attitudes toward the other. Not surprisingly, this will be tested. Question 1 asks you for the best expression of the author's main point. There is one we could eliminate immediately. D directly contradicts the final paragraph, the emotional states, so D is incorrect. A correctly follows the author's summary of many listeners' attitudes toward Schoenberg's music, but if that lingers, you may gloss over a statement that the author did not make about its appreciation now. We can eliminate A. B also assumes something not in the passage, that the author believes you should treat Schoenberg and Beethoven as equals. We can eliminate B. If you chose E, and many people have, it's because the passage tells you that Beethoven is highly regarded and Schoenberg not so much. The author doesn't say, though, how long it took Beethoven's music to achieve its status or how long Schoenberg's has existed. If we are required to make assumptions about the passage of time, it cannot be the main point. We can eliminate E. C is precisely what the author expresses in the final two sentences. Appreciation for the precise delineation of the emotional states present in Schoenberg's music. C is the correct response. Question 1 is not too difficult, but as usual, it does require a careful read of the material, and the summaries you've written or memorized will be helpful. If you got this one wrong, it may be a good time to pause this video and go back over the passage and your summaries. Question 2 wants you to compare the author's use of the word disturbing in describing Schoenberg's music to the humor of a comedian. This question is as easy as it looks. In the final sentence, the author says directly that the music is, quoting now, disturbing not because it is incoherent, shrill, and ear-splitting, but because it unflinchingly faces difficult truths. If, as the author suggests, the music is like a comedian forcing an audience to face something they'd rather not, then B is the correct response. Question 3 asks you to determine the primary purpose for the author's use of Kotzebue's quote. This, too, is fairly straightforward. Since the author does not agree with the quote and instead writes in favor of Beethoven's music, we can eliminate A. The quote is about Beethoven and cannot be about Schoenberg's music. We can eliminate B. If you chose C, you should go back to paragraph 3 and your summary. The author doesn't suggest Beethoven's music is uneven. Rather, to alter its language and extend its range gives music a new and unexpected quality. C is incorrect. E is also unsupported by the third paragraph. Katsubu was clearly not Beethoven's only critic, given how long it took for his music to become popular which leads directly to D. If, as the author suggests, music that alienated people at first is now considered the work of a cultural icon, this is the correct answer. Question 4 is another easy one. 
which did the author not say was a similarity between Beethoven and Schoenberg? B through E are all direct statements by the author, who wrote only that Schoenberg started in the late Romantic manner, not that Beethoven did. A is correct. Question 5 asks for the aspect of Schoenberg's music that the author values most. This one, too, should be obvious. It can't be the technical mastery. It's not the reason the author says we'd have had to invent Schoenberg had he not existed. It cannot be the shifting chromatic harmonies, because the author believes Schoenberg's legacy came after he'd used the late Romantic style. The author specifically writes that it's not because of the 12-tone system. E is essentially the same as A. Again, his technical mastery is not the most highly regarded. The author directly writes that it is Schoenberg's delineation of emotional states that makes his music essential. D is the correct response. Question 6 wants you to find the statement with which the author of the passage would most likely agree. It can't be B. The author is trying to convince you to appreciate Schoenberg, and certainly doesn't say each of his styles is an inexplicable departure from the style before. We can eliminate B. His third style cannot be a departure from the second. If, as the author notes in paragraph 6, Schoenberg used the 12-tone system to bring order and stability to what came before, C is incorrect. E is wrong for the same reason, since the author believes the third style was specifically used to stabilize the second. Paragraph 5 specifically notes that Schoenberg pushed unstable harmonies toward non-tonal work because he believed it to be the next step in music development. That is a move forward, so D is eliminated. The author specifically writes that Schoenberg pushed unstable harmonies toward non-tonal music, then used the 12-tone system for its stability, each a progression from the last. A is the correct response. In our next video, we will present the second passage in the Reading Comprehension section of Prep Test 76, followed by questions 7 through 13.